Grab your Bibles very quickly. First John chapter 5 from verse number 14. First John chapter 5 and verse 14. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. No, these yeses are too small. Are you ready? Yes. I think you can say it until the devil trembles where he is. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's read it together. One, two, three. And, and this, this is, is the confidence that we have in him, him that, that if we, we ask anything, anything according to his will, will he heareth us. One more time. One, two, three. And, and this, this is, is the confidence that we have in him, him mm -hmm. that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. One more time. Read it to your neighbor. And this, this is the confidence that we have in him, him. Mm -hmm. that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Find another neighbor to read it to. <laughs> One, two, three. And, and this, this is the confidence that we have in him, him. that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Find the neighbor behind you and read it to them. One, two, three, read it. And, and this, this is the, the confidence that we have in him, him that, that if we ask according, according to his will, he heareth, he heareth us. us. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. To receive your word. To receive your word. You may sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me, children of God. This is one of the most misread verses. I know I just started with throwing matches and fire and lighting everything up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the scriptures is saying this, and this is the confidence that we have in him. So there is confidence in God that we have. What is that confidence? That if we ask anything in accordance to his will or according to his will, he hears us. Now, you have to remember, it's telling you basically that God only hears you if you align to his will. Meaning praying correctly, praying with humility, or praying in whatever way you think you're praying. If it is not connected to his will, God cannot answer you. Are you listening to me? Now, what I'm going to teach you today is Meshallah, or what it means is desires. It is desires. Now, the Bible is saying it again. This is the confidence we have in him that if we ask him anything, anything, he will hear us. If it is according to his will. Now this can be a contradictory statement if you don't understand God. He said ask me anything. But if it's according to my will. Yes, yes. But when you read this verse you think God is telling you you can only ask him some things. God said ask anything. Not some things. Anything. And if it is in accordance to my will. I will give it to you. Now, what is the will of God? This is the question that everybody has. Well, he's saying if I ask him according to his will, but what is his will? Now, the issue is that we have molded God so much in our image that we miss the point that God is trying to make. And because we don't understand God in the way he wants to be understood, we miss everything that God has actually ordained for us. We miss it. This is why we have fighting in church. People going against each other in church. All this is happening because everyone is assuming God's will and very few know his will. I'll say that again. If you don't look like me, if you don't dress like me, you're fake. 
If you manifest something that I can't do, or I feel a certain way about it, then you're not of God. As if the Bible says, if you feel it is bad, then it's bad. The Bible never said that. Just because I feel something is wrong, it doesn't mean it's wrong. If scripture says it's wrong, then it's different. Are you getting what I'm saying? So everybody is thinking they're discerning God's will, but they are ordaining God's will in accordance to what they think is right. The Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right to men. It means what seems right or what looks right or what people will say is right is not always right in God's sight. Let me give you an example. Everyone looked at Rahab the prostitute and looked down on her. But God tells Moses, when you go into the city, make sure you save Rahab for me. She is righteous unto me. Everybody looked down on her, but God says she's righteous. So things are not always what they seem because you don't know what God is doing in the background. And this is why your enemies are wrong when they assume that you're going down because of what you did yesterday. What you did a week ago. Amen. Amen. They don't understand the purpose and the will of God for you. Amen. That even in your errors, all things work for good. For those who are called. Are you listening to me? Now, what is the word called there for you to understand what I'm about to tell you? Now, there is something you need to understand. The word called there is summons, or, or the, in, in, in Greek or in Hebrew, it is the word to summon. When God calls you, Jesus said, you did not choose me, I chose you. I called you unto myself. Now, everyone here, if you ask them, let me ask you, uh, let me just take a random question. When did you get born again? Uh, it's a long time ago. Okay, so you got born again a long time ago? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. So you chose Jesus? Y yes, and my parents did also. No, you didn't. He called you. <laughs> you didn't get it. Jesus said, you did not choose me, I chose you. So if you tell, say, I gave my life to Jesus. No, you didn't. He gave his life for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, you didn't get it. Some of you are still not getting it. What does it mean to summon somebody? It means against your own will. It's good, it's good, you teach it prophet. Let me show you how God calls somebody. He is busy doing his own thing in his life. God is on the other side. God says, Van, come here. Van, everything is doing. Starts leading him to God. Before he knows, he says, you know, I have realized that God is the way that, Father, I give you my life. He's thinking that he did it on his own. He doesn't know he has been summoned. Amen. You have been summoned. Amen. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. Sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Psalms 37 verse 4. We are going somewhere. Psalms 37 verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee their, your, your desires or their, your heart's desires. Let me read it again. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now this is strange. Lord you just said if we ask anything according to your will. But here you're telling me that you will give me whatever I desire. And also you're saying if I ask anything. So it means that what I can ask God has no limit. What even people may think is wrong, God is okay with it. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So the question is what is the will of God? What is the will of God? We... As believers, and, and many times this is especially in religious circles, we just want salvation, okay? But salvation is God's desire, it's not yours. Because we never prayed for salvation. That was what God wanted for us. God created us for eternity. So when man fell, God had already made a provision before even man fell. 
In the book of Revelation, it says, and the lamb who was slain from the foundations of the earth. It means Jesus already died before he died on the cross. Because God had secured us in every single way you can think of. God opened the door to make sure that we receive eternity when we live, receive Christ. So this was God's desire. It was not our desire. Because God never created us for destruction. He created us to spend eternity with him. So salvation was not man's plan. It was God's plan. So when you say that all I want is salvation, it is good, but that's God's desire for you. You just realize that you don't want to die. You don't want to go to hell. I rather align with God, but this is God's desire. There are things that God desires for you. But for you to be an individual and not to be a robot, God has to allow you to also have your desires. But God is saying, if your desires ask me anything, but they have to align to my will. So many of you are afraid to ask God certain things. You are afraid to pray for certain things, pursue certain things. You are always doubting because your question is, what if I am not doing God's will? That's good. That's good. Let me find somebody I can preach to. Amen. That's good. So you find yourself in a weird place. Where you're like, okay, is what I'm doing God's will? What is, what, is the, what is God hating? What is aligned to God's desire? If I ask that, many of you will give me different answers. But I want to tell you there is one answer. If you get this right, you get everything right. Okay, maybe it's for those who are online. Let, let me get into this. Maybe it is for those who are online. Let me get this for you. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 17. We're going somewhere. Amen. Galatians 5 from 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Notice the, what the Bible is saying. It's saying your flesh now, the issue with believers, you don't understand the language of the Bible. You don't understand the language of the Bible. The scripture says this, God is the God of all flesh. In Numbers, I believe, chapter 5, verse 16, if, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Moses is before God and, and God is angry with everybody and God is about to destroy them. And him and Aaron bow themselves down and they say, God, you are the God of all flesh. Now, if what is the context of the flesh here? The flesh meaning the physical body. Are you getting what I'm saying? The flesh simply means your physical body. Are you understanding? But when the Bible is speaking in spiritual context, saying the flesh, it is talking about the cultures and the ways of earthly people. The Bible says we are in the world but not of it. Well, we are all born the same way. We all came from a woman. We were all born the same way. So why is God saying we are in the world but not of it? It is because the body is simply a house. When you gave your life to Christ, the Lord supplanted your spirit. There was a new spirit. The Bible says that you became a new creation. Just because you're living in an old house, it doesn't mean you're old. Amen, amen. amen. I don't know if somebody can hear me. You may have bought a home that was built in the 90s. You may buy a home that is built in the 80s, in the 60s. The house may be old, but you are not old. You are a new creation. You never existed. This is what the scriptures say. So when the Bible is talking about the flesh in this context, it is not speaking about your body. It is talking about the nature of the body. Because if you are alive, you are in the flesh. Right now you go to work to take care of your flesh, not your spirit. You are buying clothes to cover your flesh. Are you getting what I'm saying? You eat 
to nourish what? Your flesh. So in the context of the body, the flesh is innocent. Actually, your body, what you don't know, many of you, is your body is also spiritual. Yes. Yeah, your body is spiritual. A hundred percent. This physical body is also spiritual. How did Jesus resurrect with the same body? Pierced, but he's not dying. Bled out, but he's not dying. Sat down and ate with his disciples. Took the same body and went with it to heaven. When Jesus resurrected, the Bible says that coffins were open, graves were open. And the prophets of old that were buried in Israel, they all resurrected with the same body. Why do you think that God wants to put your body back on that great day when the Lord comes with the shout of an archangel? The Bible says that our bodies will come back together. Because your body was never... Your body was never created for destruction. It says your body will be renewed. The reason why your body does what it does now, it is because it has an error, a program called sin. But the body itself, Elijah went to heaven with this body. If the flesh is bad, how did Elijah go to heaven? How did Enoch disappear with the same body? He walked with God and he just entered the spiritual realm and never came back. Paul... Paul is in prayer. He says this, he says, I know a man who was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or the spirit, I do not know. He's saying, I went there, I don't even know if it was with my body or without my body. It means the experience was exactly the same when he's on earth. Uh, you're not listening to me. Why did somebody touch the body of Jesus and get healed? Why is it that the apostles, they will touch you and you get healed? Why is it that if I blow on you? <laughs> Why? Because you assume that the vehicle is bad. No, it is the nature of this world that has corrupted what is pure. So Amen. Good. Amen. Amen. This is why the Bible tells you this. You can sin against what? Your own body. So if you can sin against your body, then your body is also what? Spiritual. The Bible says the sins of the flesh. You can sin against yourself. Some of you need to repent to your own body. I'm sorry I haven't taken you to the gym. I am sorry I haven't been eating correctly. Let me find somebody that wants to hear the word of God. Some of you, your body is complaining against you. Why do you think when you go to the doctors, they ask you, how do you feel? They take your blood because your blood will tell the doctor what is going on. I need the iron deficiency. Because if your body is broken, how can you be useful for God? Are you listening to me? I prophesy to somebody. May your eyes be open to understand Amen. things of the spirit. See. Now sit down for two seconds. So listen to what it's saying. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Meaning that the spirit has its nature. Your flesh also has its nature. And these are contrary one to the other. So that they cannot do the things that you would. Not what God would. You. The nature of the flesh can prevent you from doing what you need to do. So what is stopping you is not the devil. You teach it. Ah, uh, you see. I'm preaching to the I think I should go to overflow. Overflow. Maybe you will respond to me better. I, are you listening to me? Yes. Now look at this. We are going somewhere. Verse 18. <laughs> But if ye are led by of the spirit, you are not under the law. Wait, 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 wait. Something is strange here. If the flesh leads me, I can't do what God has given me the ability to do. But if I'm led by the spirit, even though the fleshly things are still there, I am no longer under the law. So what is determining whether you are in the law or not in the law is what is leading you. 
not the decisions you make in the flesh. Amen. Wait, you're going to see it in a second. Verse 19, watch this. Look at this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Wait. So the flesh has its own manifestation. The spirit also has its own what? Manifestation. The flesh. How do you know that I am becoming fleshly? There is manifestations that your flesh will do. How do I know that I am being led by the spirit? Is the manifestation of the flesh go down and the manifestations of the spirit begin but now the issue is this the line is so blurred is blood unless you know this verse are you here am i making sense so far if you can hear me wave your hands for a second wave your hands for a second hallelujah now watch this now the works of the flesh are manifest which are this adultery, fornication, uncleanness, la laviciousness, whatever it's called, <laughs> idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, 21, envy, murder, drunkardness. Revealings, ministry of exposure. You're right there. And such like. Of which, of, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Wait right there. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temper, temper, uh, temperance, against such there is no law. Stop right there. Notice what the scripture just said. It said the works of the flesh are contrary to the spirit. For the spirit wants you to do something different and your flesh wants you to do something different. How do you know your flesh is manifesting? It says murder, idolatry, fornication, all these things, right? Then he says the fruit of the spirit is love, peace, joy, meekness, faith. Okay? Now, Jesus said, if you ask according to my will, right? Many of you Think driving a Lamborghini is a sin. It is not in that list. Amen. Why do you think it's a sin? Dressing nicely. Me, I dress the way I want. I, I, Why would somebody else look at you? Look at me and say, that person is in the flesh. Look at how they are dressing. Because they don't know the works of the flesh. They assume if you like good things, you are in the flesh. The Bible did not say that. The Bible says if you are envious, if you are murderous, if you are an idolater, you are already outside of the will of God. If you ask anything, you are not receiving it. Wow. James said this, why is there murdering and killing amongst you? It is because you ask, but you don't receive. And you don't receive because you ask amiss. Because you ask to, to enjoy these things selfishly. Selfishly amongst yourself. With you, you want to be selfish with God's blessing. Notice, if God, if right now you pray, Father, I need finances. There is somebody in the world who also wants finances. What will be the difference between your money and their money? Absolutely nothing. Money is just money. But the manifestation of the flesh will make you be carnal. And the manifestation of the spirit will make you what? Spiritual. Are you getting what I'm saying? So how do I know that what I'm praying for is in accordance to the will of God?
I have to make sure. Verse 22. Are you ready? I walk in love. I walk in joy. I have peace. I am patient. I am gentle. I have goodness. I have faith. 23. I am meek. I have temperance. Against such there is no law. Meaning I am just doing me with Jesus. Amen. If I say, Father, give me a castle, you say here. Amen. Amen. Father, I need a plane here. Yes. See. Let, some of, Amen. Okay, some people I think this. <laughs> you have been tricked. Sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. You have been tricked to think taking care of yourself, having the best means you're carnal. Some of them have even come and lied to you. They, they, they even said the prosperity gospel. Let me tell you, if you don't like prosperity, just reject Christ. Because poverty and Jesus don't go together. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me find somebody that I will tell this to. No, they don't go together. Sit down for two seconds. You really think a God who has prepared a city that you will live in, the streets are gold. Everybody has a mansion. You think that God is interested in you being poor? If you read Isaiah, it says this. It says that men will give unto your bosoms. You have vineyards and you have foreigners working your vineyards, but they shall call you the priests of God. Not because you are broke. Not because you're fasting, but because the blessing of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I prophesy to somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. May you receive the best that God has ordained for you. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sit down for two seconds. Apostle Paul said something very beautiful. Great Apostle Paul said this. The great Apostle Paul said this. He says, listen, guys, you have been drinking milk for too long. It's time for meat. You want elementary things. Can we grow past those things? What are the elementary things? Listen, if you are church from the day you join them, they just teach about sin. Sin. They're, in an, they're an elementary church. If you are, the Bible says those who are in Christ no longer sin. It means that you have passed the stage. No one needs to tell you, stop sinning. Amen. You are in Jesus. You know your God is holy. It is natural for you to shun sin. The reason why everything is sinful to you is because you have a sin conscious. You have, everything is demonic because all they tell you is the devil, Satan, Illuminati, this, this. Did the Lord really tell you to focus on that? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Not without knowing Illuminati. Instead of working on faith, and what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You should be captivated with what God has prepared for you. Amen. When you are captivated by that, now you begin to please God. Hallelujah. When you begin to believe in the impossible, yeah. now you begin to please God. Yeah. When you begin to believe Jesus can heal, now you are pleasing God. Hallelujah. When you believe Jesus can deliver, yeah. now you are pleasing God. Hallelujah. When you believe God can change your life, now God is pleased with you. Yeah. When you believe Jesus Jesus can raise the dead. Now you're pleasing God. When you believe God can take you from grass to grace, now you're pleasing God. Yeah. When you believe Jesus can heal cancer, can heal the blind, Jesus can redeem the lost, whether you're on drugs, whether you're forsaken, now you're pleasing God. Yeah. Somebody say uh, fire. I, Sit, sit, sit for two seconds. We are busy trying to make, you see, let me, let me explain to you something. Let me explain to you something. You see, how do you know you have become spiritual? You don't try to have joy. Joy is just your nature. Yes, yes. 
How do you know you have become spiritual? You are just meek. No one has to tell you be humble. You are just, meekness is just your nature. When people provoke you, you just, Father have mercy on them. They. Amen. When you are meek, Amen. I agree with you. May he help us all. Anger is no longer a thing. When you are upset, somebody pushes your buttons. Instead of, Father, I speak blessing over them. Father, increase them. Father, change them. You You are offended that they don't know any better. Not you're offended by what they said to you. There is just an... There is just something that just becomes who you are. Are are you listening to me? Yes. So people are fighting. People are fighting to do certain things because they are trying to make fleshly, suppress fleshly desires in the name of holiness. Yet God is looking at you saying, (laughs) Apostle Paul is praying, Father, deliver me. Deliver me. God says, uh, he prayed the first one, God ignored him. Prayed the second time, God ignored, ignored him. The third time, God finally said, my guy, my grace is sufficient. Stop asking. Just receive my grace. You are bound with the fleshly natures because you have rejected the grace of God. You are struggling with drugs. You are struggling with pornography. You are struggling with all these things. Because you have not gone before God and said, you know what, Lord? I have tried. I am failing. Please give me the grace. The ability to just change yes. into the... That's it. Amen. I have realized my strength can't do it. I can't break this alcohol addiction. I can't break this drug addiction. I can't break this anger. I can't break this bitterness. Father, by your grace. Are are you listening to what I'm saying? The reason why we are fighting with all these things, even our prayer is crippled. Because we are setting the terms in which God must receive us. Yet God simply wants you to be spiritual. Let me give you an example of how different God is from you. And me also. How God is different from all of us. I'm going to say something that may sound controversial, but it's true. It will be controversial for those who don't know God. But it's just the Bible. Okay? The Bible says that God is seeking those who will worship him what? I I can't hear you. In what? One more time. God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Did you hear that? So worship has nothing to do with your voice. Worship has nothing with singing in key. God is not interested in your sound. God is interested in the sound your spirit makes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so you may be there. Go. Some of you will say, you know what? I can't even sing, so I'm not going to worship God. God is like. Because worship has nothing to do with your voice. Many times, eh, prophets naturally they love music, but in reality is. Uh, of prophets can't sing, but they love music. They may hold a note, but the singing, singing, they can't. But they are the deepest worshippers because it has nothing to do with your voice. Whenever something has to be pleasing physically, it is away from God. This is why when you get into real worship, this brother may be praying. Zaka parataka pak. You will be. 
God is like, that is the best worship I can hear. Because you are not responding according to the chords that are being played. You are responding according to the music coming from your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So good. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So all these things are spiritual because that's what God is interested in. Are you capturing what I'm saying here? Yeah. Let's, keep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I have, I have 20 minutes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 16, 23. John 16, 23. John 16, verse 23. Listen to this. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, I will give it. Jesus did not say some things. Whatsoever. Blank check. The reason why you're not getting what you are asking is you're praying from the flesh, not the spirit. Let me give you an example. I want God to give me nice clothes so that people can see how well I'm dressed flesh I want God to give me the best clothes because it makes me feel good spirit it has nothing to do with others it has everything to do with what Amen. it is my desire it is not my desire because I want to prove to somebody I'm gonna show them it's just what I desire some of you, you are not receiving anything from God because everything God wanted to give you, he gave you. Let me explain it. If you ask God for healing, God gives you Jesus. If you ask God for protection, God gives you Jesus. If you ask God for money, God gives you Jesus. Because everything that God will give you, he will give you through Jesus. So in the account balance of God, it only says Jesus. So everything that God wanted to give you, he has given you. Any, everything that you want. That is why he says, he has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Everything to do with life, he already gave you. What he knows you need for life is Jesus. But when you receive Jesus, the Bible says it like this. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all its righteousness, not your righteousness. Now, if you know righteousness, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is our righteousness so if you're seeking righteousness you're seeking who jesus not acts so seeking righteousness is seeking after jesus so when jesus told his disciples seek first the kingdom of god and all its righteousness and all these things what are all these things the lambo the plane the all these things will be added to you. Why? Because if you have Jesus in you, it will be to benefit others. It will not be to flex on others. Are you listening to me? Now watch this. Jesus is about to ascend. Remember, Jesus died and rose again. So his disciples saw that and they confessed that. Now they are on the other side. Jesus is about to ascend. He says, hey guys, uh, I forgot to tell you this. If anybody comes to tell you the kingdom of God is over there, the kingdom of God is over here, say, don't believe them. It is already inside of you. So many of you are seeking something that is already inside of you. <laughs> Somebody didn't hear what I said. You are looking for something that is already in you. Instead of being in everything else, you're already, you're still in what is being the gift of righteousness. It was given to you, you didn't work for it. If you have to work for righteousness, it is you. Yes. Jesus is not involved. If you have to work righteousness, you are doing you filthy rags. This is why people who want self-righteousness, they never walk in the power of God you will find that they never talk about their experience with God or what God can do. 
they are rooted in what people have done wrong. Because they are comparing to themselves. They are blind. But anyone that has seen Jesus will know that, hey, I am here because of Christ. And because I am here because of Christ, I have no stage or platform to talk negatively about anybody else. Because just like them, I was once also under the prince of the power of the air. Amen. I was disobedient to God also. But now God has saved me. He can save them also. I may criticize them today, but they are the bishop tomorrow. They are Moses of tomorrow. Elijah of... I may need them. But above all, God loves them. It is not my place. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You are afraid to ask because you are asking from a negative place. I know men of God that God has blessed. They are afraid to dress nicely because of what people will say. God is offended by that. I blessed you. Oh, they will say that I took money from the church. Did you take money from the church? No. Why do you have a guilty conscience? Why? Why? Why do you have a guilty conscience? Who cares what they say? When you sleep in your house, did they pay your rent? Did they put food on your table? Why do you care? Why do you have a guilt? The Bible says that we have been purged from a guilty conscience. If I have not done anything wrong in the sight of God, I don't care what anybody says. Do you know why I am the way I am? I am the way I am because when I used to walk without a car, they were not there. Come on. Amen. When I slept hungry, they were not there. Amen. When I could not afford clothes, they were not there. Yeah. Now God has blessed me so that I can have those things that I desired. Yes. I am going to block God's hand because of what people will think of me. Hey. Do you see how backward that is? It is wrong in the sight of God, children of God. Jesus said, on that day, on what day? God is calling you to a place of maturity. Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Even Solomon with all his glory, look at who God compared you to. God is comparing you to a king. He's saying, even Solomon, who can afford all these things, the way I would dress you, Solomon will look from heaven and say, mm, Amen. I wish I lived when Gucci was a... See. I wish I lived in the era that... But you're busy starving yourself, frustrated, <laughs> constipated in the spirit. Everyone sees you. They say, how are you? Mm, shanda, ba, ba, ba. It is from constipation of the spirit. <laughs> Sister, praise God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how are you, brother? Mm, I'm good. And then they'll be the first one to say, there is no love. You don't even smile. So when people also stop smiling at you, this church, everybody's just so mean. Please go and look at yourself on the mirror. Right, right. You are wrinkling because you're always like this. Right. Somebody will look at you. Are you okay? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You think you're doing deadlifts of something. You... <laughs> Your voice doesn't even have warmness. Your voice is ice cold. And someone looks at you and says, yeah, I have joy. I have joy, okay? Why are you angry? 
I am not hang. Whoa. Touch your neighbor, say, may God deliver us. May God deliver us. John 14, 14, I'm about to finish. Now, now look, listen to this, children of God. Listen to this and capture this with everything that is in you. I pray that this enters you. We have a good time. I make these jokes to keep your mind engaged with what God is saying. I don't want it to be like, uh, was it Peter or Paul? Uh, Paul, he's preaching until somebody fell out the window, died. He went and raised them up because they were not laughing. You know, when you laugh, you wake up. They're like, okay, you're... You don't want to be. You will notice the ones that fall asleep in church are always like this. <laughs> Somebody that is laughing, enjoying God, they can't sleep. They're engaging with God. You ask them, what did prophet teach? Oh, the love of God. <laughs> you ask them, are you sure? You know, when he was talking, God was also talking to me. No, you are sleeping. <laughs> You're not listening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus said, whosoever shall speak to this mountain and not doubt in his heart. Do you know why you doubt? You doubt where you stand with him. You are unsure of where you are with Jesus. That's good. Maybe I sinned against God. Before I ask God of anything, uh, you, you say God is your father. No, but you think of him like your boss. If you do something wrong, he will throw you, beat you. That's how you think of God. You don't think of your, your father. Listen, my son Andrew can do whatever. I'll be upset, but that does not stop me from my duties as a father. Even if I say no, it will be to teach him something, but I will still give it to him. His duty is to remember this is my dad, not my boss, not the sheriff, not the... Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Your children should have a healthy fear of you, not terror. God does not want us to have terror of him. He wants us to fear him. And the fear is not just reverence. No, fear that he can whoop you also, but he still loves you. The Bible says God chastises those who he loves. God will, pa, I love you. <laughs> the Bible says, and... The Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The next second he's sending him to the wilderness to be tempted. The love of God is deep. If ye ask anything in, in my name, I will do it. Anything. You are doubting where you stand with him. Because you don't understand that Jesus is your righteousness. You want to justify yourself before God can answer you. But you don't understand the goodness of God brings men to repentance. The goodness of God brings men to repentance. Not the anger of God. Not hell. Not anxiety of separation. You doubt where you stand. And your doubt is what is plaguing and fighting your faith. Because do you know why when you repent, God hears you? I thought God doesn't listen to sinners. Why is it when you are asking for forgiveness and you're repenting, God hears you? Have you ever asked yourself that question? They said God doesn't listen to sinners. But when you're saying, Father, forgive me, I am still, it is still a sinner praying for help to be delivered from sin. Why is God listening? Because the moment you align yourself to his will, you're no longer a sinner. You are praying because you're no longer. Amen. Amen. 
I think I'm talking to the wrong people. Do you understand what I just told you? You ask thinking you have offended God. Just the fact that you've gone to him, daddy. You're already on the other side. Remember the prodigal son. He sat down and said, mm, man, I've definitely sinned against God. And I've sinned against my father. Even my father's servants, man, they live better than this. I'm going to go back and apologize that he may even make me like one of these guys. I'll be just fine. So while he's thinking of this, saying this to himself, walking home, his father was waiting to see him on the horizon. His father went, while he's still trying to repent, his father didn't say, I'm going to repent first. <laughs> I didn't feel it. You didn't mean it. <laughs> That's not what God did. Well, just because he turned to him, his father ran to hug him even though he had filthy clothes. It did not matter. His father hugged him, kissed him. He began to give orders to the servant. Bring him a new gown. Take him my ring. Let us have a celebration. God wants you to run to him, not from him. Amen. 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 You really think God wants you to go to the devil? God wants you to go to him. The Lord wants you to come to him. Jesus is waiting for you to see that you are wrong and you know that he's your only help and you come, dad. I messed up. While you are saying that the Holy Spirit has already embraced you, the Holy Spirit has already changed your garment. God is already lifting you. God is already promoting you. God is already aligning you to his purpose. Amen. Ask anything. He didn't say some things. How do I know that I'm asking for the right thing? I need to make sure that the anger, the anxiety, all that things, all those things that were mentioned in Galatians are not the reason why I'm doing anything. Then now I know the prayer I'm, I'm offering before God. God is listening to me. You see, you don't know, you don't, you, you, your consciousness or your awareness of knowing God hears you should not be based on the results. You should know this while you're praying that God has heard you. The Bible says this, if you ask and believe, you have it. You don't receive what God has for you when you say amen. The fact that you said, Father, in the name of Jesus, you already have it. You ask because you have. Amen. You don't ask so that you have. Amen. No. That's wrong. That's not what the Bible is saying. It's saying if you ask, you already have it. Meaning the act of turning to God and saying, Lord Jesus, you are my source, is because he has already given it to you. Your spirit is responding to something your flesh has not has not seen. That is what faith is. Yes. Faith is seeing something with your spirit that your physical body cannot touch, yeah. cannot smell, cannot taste. But your spirit has assured you. Your spirit has assured you. Your spirit has assured you. That God Almighty. The reason why, I think I taught this a while ago. The reason why you ask is because there is a need. But there is a need because there is already a solution. Amen. 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 You are asking because the answer exists. It is impossible for you to think of what has not existed yet. You are not God. I am not God. We cannot see beyond reality. So everything that we desire, it already exists. Just because I don't have it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. In fact, the Bible says the deep calleth unto the deep. You are desiring something because it is calling to you. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you can hear me. 
You are desiring that house because it's waiting for you. Amen. You are desiring that car because it's waiting for you. Amen. You are desiring that elevation because it's waiting for you. Yes. Amen. You are responding to something that there is a call of God. It it is pulling. Yes. yes. It is pulling you to God. It is pulling you to God. The question is, will you accept it? Absolutely. That is the question. Will you accept it? Will you look at God and say, Father, I receive it. You see, the reason why people have a hard time believing prophecy is because prophecy goes beyond what you asked for. That's good. When God came to Abraham, and Abraham is an old man, he says, Abraham, you're about to be father of nations. What? I'm old. Even if I produce children, I will not see them old. I'm an old man. But God is saying, yeah, I'm about to make you like go outside, look at the stars. Can you count the sand at the shore of the beach? No. That's how many kids you're going to have. So Abraham's like, where I am and what you're saying. Huh? Then the Bible says, Abraham believed God and he was counted for him righteousness. Whenever God says something to you, it should not just be yes. When it hits you, say, how is this going to happen? Now you know God spoke to you. Yay. Amen. <laughs> God looks at you and says, uh, by tomorrow evening, there will be one billion in your account. You need to scratch your head and say, uh, I have no work that can. You know what? It would take you, God, to do it. So I surrender to. Amen. Hallelujah. Prophecy makes you to surrender. It makes you to surrender. It breaks everything in you for you to just be. You know what? It will take you to do it. So I put my trust in you. If you have to make it work. Then God never said it. Because whenever God says something to you. The people around you will think you're crazy. But you have the drive, the capacity to pull it off. And when you do, you will even ask yourself, how did I do it? Because I don't get how I... You know that the hand of God moved Amen. on your behalf. Amen. Jesus said, ask me anything in accordance to my will. The will of God is that you be spiritual. Abraham was a spiritual man. The Bible says that he was extra wealthy. He was rich. Job was a great man in the east. A man that feared God. Then he tells you how much money he had. But you have been taught having wealth is a sin. How, how is, that's not even biblical. The Bible says money answers all things. Your pastor is busy telling you money is bad. No, it's wrong. It's demonic. You don't pay, tongue, you don't pay rent with tongues. <laughs> when you go to the gas station road, right now, especially as we are in Cali, you look at the gas prices, a shanda bakaya. <laughs> Father God, Eriya Masota. Eliya Makasa. He will not lower the gas price. Father, I stretch my hands on the gas. I do it by faith, Lord. It's not going to move. But when you're blessed, you're blessed by the hand of God. It doesn't matter if the price goes up, it goes down. Amen. You can afford it because Jesus has blessed you. Amen. We are not of this world. The economy of this world should not control us. 
Elijah, there was a drought that he declared. Everybody is struggling. Elijah is eating cake. They are just baking. People can't find anything. You pass by the the woman in her son's house with Elijah. Donuts. (laughs) Are are you getting what I'm saying? Let me show you how the attitude of many believers are. I, I don't remember where this is, but it's in Kings. Elisha was with a certain woman, okay? And the woman came to Elisha and said, your servant, my husband, has died. And this, your servant had many debts. He has so many unpaid debts. And the people who his, his creditors want to take my son to work off the debt of your servant. Man of God, help me. Elisha told him, woman, I want you to go into your house, get every jar you can find, get every jar you can find, and then go to your neighbors and find every, borrow jars from your neighbors. And when you have borrowed the jars from your neighbors, come back to me. The oil that I have here, I'm going to pour it into the jars. And the moment the oil stops, fills the jars, then it will stop flowing. The Bible says the woman never went to borrow jars. She just went and got jars in her house to have enough oil to sell for her son not to be taken. But when Elisha spoke to her, he spoke to her to borrow other vessels so that she can start a business. She would have been the first richest oil tycoon in the Middle East and he would have been a woman. Wow. Now you people miss it. She was only looking at her son not to be taken into slavery. God wanted to wipe poverty from their family forever. May you be somebody that will obey the... Amen. Amen. See. Amen. Imagine, the prophet is saying, go and borrow every jar you can find. Okay, if I borrow jars, it's just a jar. Okay, let me borrow a jar. I sell oil. I'm going to buy more jars. It's not a big deal. Her, she was just so caught up with her, 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 her child. I, I, don't, I don't want my child to be taken. If my, if my son is taken now, everything. No, no, I just don't want my son to be taken. You see, some of you, you don't understand your problem is an opportunity for God to give you wealth. Amen. 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 But you just want riches. Amen. And God wants to give you wealth. Maybe overflow. Let me talk to overflow. Let me talk to the people who are in over. Overflow, if you would stand, God will give you wealth. Amen. Amen. These guys are not loud enough. Shout a better amen. Amen. I said shout a bigger amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. You need to change your mindset. You are too, God, if you just, if you just help me this month. How about God? I am tired of giving people money for, give me my own house. Amen. And give me the means that all my children will have their houses. Amen. Yes. You are just praying, your, 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 your vision is poquito. I'm learning my Spanish, you know. You know, I'm, I'm going to the land of prophecy. Amen. Uh, uh, are you getting what I'm saying? So God is elevating us, but you need to understand. When the Bible says, ask me anything, God means it. Where is that desire coming from? There's a thing I want to say, but I don't want to say because it can be a problem. When, when, when David, okay, when David killed his friend to take his wife, the prophet came to confront him, told him, hey, there's a guy who killed his friend. 
and took his wife. What should happen to them? David was like, that man should die. He said it like an African. He must die. <laughs> you know, Africans don't say you will die. They say, you shall die. You must come with power. He said, that guy is you. David said, oh my God, I have sinned. Then God spoke to him. Do you know what God told him? God told him, did I not give you everything that you want? Even your master's concubines that you like, I gave them to, to you. If you ask me of such, don't you think I would have given you? I'm not saying ask for that. He will not give it to you. I block that in the name of Jesus. But think, uh, think about that. God has said, everything you have ever asked me for, I gave it to you. Even the things you desired you didn't tell me, I still gave it to you. Why did you have to kill your friend? If you asked me for such, don't you think I would have given it to you? Stop envying people. Stop being jealous of people. Let your inner man change. Become a person of substance in the sight of God. That when God looks at you, he knows that this one whatsoever, whatso, listen, the Bible says whatsoever. Start praying bef beyond your needs. Become prophetic. See beyond your issues. Don't wait for your issues to be solved so that you can create another issue. I say, now God, I just needed, I just wanted this small condo. Now I can afford it now. Lord, I need a bigger. Why didn't you just start with that, Father? Launch me into. Amen. 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 Why should the world have things yeah. that you who is the child of God should have? Amen. The Bible goes as far as to tell you. The scriptures tell you this. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. There is a wicked person right now sitting on billions that belong to you because you have no mission. God is saying they better keep it. Let them keep investing. Let it grow. One day a righteous person that has the vision from me that can ask according to my will. I will release this to them. Yes. Amen. This is what God is waiting for. This is what God is waiting for. Stop praying from a guilty conscience. Take that away. Understand that God is merciful. Repent before God. But you have, you see, you cannot, you see, breaking habits is a process. Breaking patterns is a process. You can't just say, I will never do this. I will give you 24 hours. <laughs> Your, your, your right leg will just start. <laughs> Lord, no. <laughs> your hand will start. Not long. Just 24 hours. Your mind will start thinking. And Jesus said this. As a man thinketh so easy. So you, you are trying to suppress physical actions. But you don't know that if your mind thinks it, you already cannot. Jesus said, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery with her. So God does not look at sin from the perspective of you physically doing it. The fact you thought of it, you did it. So it means God wants to deliver you from thought patterns. Amen. Amen. Because where you think, your body will follow. Yeah. Now you didn't hear me. Where your mind thinks, your body will follow. So I'm here to tell you this again. Look to God and accept God's sacrifice. Don't formulate your own sacrifice. Accept his sacrifice. Accept his ways. Accept what he has done. Not what you will do. Not what you think. What he has done. When we come to the place of what he has done, then nothing is restricted from us. The Bible says God would not withhold any good thing from us. The Bible says that our God will satisfy our mouth with good things. God wants you to be able to say, I have that, I have this, I have glory. God wants you to have that satisfaction. 
Not oh, only others have it. I don't know if I will ever. Oh God, what about me? Oh, it's just others. God doesn't want that for you. Are you listening to me? Yes. Lift your hands to the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord Jesus. In a little bit, I'm going to call you forth so that I can pray for you. Yes. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. I want you to pray and say, Father, I receive you. Father, I receive you. And your ways. And your ways. In its fullness. In its fullness. Not my way. Not my way. But your way. But your way. Not my thoughts. Not my thoughts. But your thoughts. But your thoughts. Father, I want to think the way you think. Father, I want to think the way you think. Your word says. Your word says. Let this mind. Let this mind. Also be in you. Also be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. That was in Christ Jesus. I want that mind, O Lord. I want that mind, O Lord. That I may know your perfect will. That I may know your perfect will. That I may walk in your perfect will that I may walk in your perfect to fulfill what you have ordained for me to fulfill what you have ordained for me lift up your voice and begin to speak to God Father cause us to know your will today oh Father cause us to walk in your ways oh Father cause us to know your ways oh God so that we may fulfill everything that you have purposed in us oh God so that we may receive everything that you have for us today oh father cause us to know your ways cause us to know your mind cause us to know your will in the name of Jesus Makiva Le pa rudo vunasto ba akri ivinis. Le pa ridi mandos marika dusta ba andele ni pas. Si pa lo kurva noste. Se pa andele ni krediva rosto mamande rekis. Ri pa kuri vini. Le pa riga sonde. Lift your voices. Pray. Pray. Press to know His will. Press to know His way. Press to have everything that he wants for you. We cannot leave here the same. We cannot leave here the same. Alla ruva nu crediva nanto va handes. Si pa cura va na curi di vilipe. Pecaris va nusto va na cradu va nusta. Se da mande le ni predike. Riva adusa. Si la ma hande le ni crudo va nusta. Si la ma luz de le ni ma sonto robo chica. Era ma sanda la ba 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 ba. Rokon le le besi a cara ma seta. Rande rebe iria masoka, remende rebe haria basoko robo. God bless you, sir. Maruko do ba nasto ba handele nete, kira ba sudos, vendo le ni presi ba nakos. Ma pari ba hudos le ni presi ba lapa, suri ba ni presi ba lapa. Sepa, 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 Sepa,
Father, in the name of Jesus, I pull down every thought. I pull down every imagination. Everything that exalts itself above your word. Everything that exalts itself above your word. In my mind. In my, mind, in my heart. In, my heart in, the in the name of Jesus. I pull it down. I pull, it down. I pull down every stronghold in my mind. I pull down every stronghold in, my mind. in the mighty name of Jesus. Name begin of Jesus. to pull it down. Begin to pull it down. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. Just because you have heard this message, just because you have believed these words, something has already shifted for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I thought overflow would be. By this point, honestly, listen to me, you don't even need prophecy even though we will prophesy yeah. amen but just faith in what god has spoken has already positioned you for what god has for you amen are you listening to me yes. understand that god has something good for you amen. understand that god has not withheld anything from you yes thank you it is the lie of the enemy to make you believe that God has forgotten you, God has forsaken you, God has nothing for you, it's a lie. You are where you are, not because of what you have done. You just don't know what God has ordained for you. If you are suffering and you are a child of God, your suffering does not compare to the glory that is to be revealed. Amen. Amen. So your suffering is to bring forth glory. Yes. Yeah. Clap your hands for the king. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. It is not normal for a man to look at you and to know things about you unless God is speaking. Amen. Even Satan doesn't know anything about you. I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't work like that. Ask yourself this question. You know, prophet, this makes me laugh all the time. Jacob is wrestling an angel from heaven. And he tells the angel, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then the angel says, what is your name? The angel didn't even know who that was. But you want to say the devil knows people. An angel from the presence of God didn't know who Jacob was. 
and you want to say familiar spirits know people that's not what the bible says the bible says do not consult familiar spirits you want to know what will happen to you you want to know the right decision to make god said don't go to familiar spirits don't go to fallen spirits don't go to demons come to my prophets i have given amen hallelujah amen, amen. amen. who will speak by my spirit yeah. it's crazy to me you see all these things happen prophet is because people don't know spiritual things you are being taught by people who have never prophesied they have never heard from god yeah. they have perceived from god but they have never heard the voice Even angels don't know anything about you unless God tells them. The Bible says, for they desire to look into these things. It is a desire of theirs that when they walk with you to help you, even their revelation of God increases. Remember, the cross is not their experience. Are you listening to me? They don't know anything about salvation. They are learning it from us. Thank you for watching over me. Thank, Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for fulfilling your word over me. Thank, Thank you, you for lifting up your voice and begin to pray. Father, Thank Jesus name. In Jesus name.